adventure in time and space, told in future. The mansion. <laughs> I remember I learned how to ride bikes in preschool. They had those they had those metal bikes. Did you ever ride those? Yeah, the, they were yellow. They Ours had... were just they were metal. They were metal bikes and they had a rubber strip on the t on the wheel. And they were I was the only person in preschool that could ride a two-wheeler. I don't remember ever having training wheels. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going into surgery tomorrow. Uh, hopefully everything goes well and according to plan. Um, I've just been sitting on this couch and laying in my bed for two weeks. I've watched everything on Netflix that I've wanted to watch. Everybody always wants to know like your worst injuries or how many you know how many bones you broken You know like what's the worst crash? The second I hit the ground I knew that I broke my leg I remember lying there for about 15 minutes because I felt like I was gonna throw up. I was super nauseous After about 15 minutes. I was like, okay. I told my friends. I was like, I'm ready. Let's do this and they lifted me up and put my bike under me and I sat down on my seat and then they picked my leg up and put it on my pedal. They got me all straightened up and we didn't have very far to push. Maybe like 1500 feet to the car. You now I had to go through the dirt and I remember waking up from the surgery and my knee hurt, like the top of my knee or the I guess the the lower part of my knee hurt and I was I asked, I was like, why does my knee hurt? And they're like, well, that's where we put the rod in. And I was like, okay, that makes sense. I guess I didn't really think where they were going to put the rod in. But yeah, they put the rod all the way down my uh, tibia. <clears throat> my tibia was broken in two spots. And they put two set screws at the top and two set screws at the bottom. And so I'm on... I'm on like week three and a half from the surgery. I think one of the worst crashes I, I've ever had, I was in Riverside and I was, I was at these jumps and I went off the jump and I did a, I did an ET, so I did like a, you know, I cranked in the air, it's kind of a silly trick. And when I landed, my handlebar snapped and I mean, I went straight to the ground with my face, and that, I mean, I, I knocked myself out for a second, and I kind of came to, and I didn't even know what happened. I was just laying there, and I had my handlebar in my hand, still, and I was seeing like triples of everything. It was so weird. My friend came over, and he's like, dude, you just slammed your face so hard. I was like, dude, I don't feel good. And uh, I ended up getting up, my vision kind of came back to, and I wanted to get back on my bike and ride, and I was like, oh wait, no, I broke my handlebar. My friend's like, you're done riding. You definitely got a concussion on that. But I'm doing good, I'm, I'm healing up. I'm gonna be, be able to put some weight on my leg pretty soon. And I'm going to be on my bike in no time. <laughs> what a lot of people don't realize when you tell them, you know, you ride mountain bikes is pretty much the amount, the, the size of the risk that you take every time you go out riding. Um, it's gotten to an extreme level 
where a lot of people, oh, you know, I ride mountain bikes, okay, that means you, you kind of put around the trails, you go down some stuff, you pedal up a lot, um, but that's not really what, what, what we're doing. Uh, my friends and I really try and push ourselves to the, the highest level, try and hit the biggest stuff, the steepest stuff, and, uh, yeah, I mean, people who don't ride mountain bikes at that level, it's very hard to explain to them the, the intensity of the stuff that you're riding, it, it scares you. Um, and uh, that's something that's lost uh, in the communication phase. Like if, some, if someone was to see you ride or watch a video, then you know maybe they'd get a better idea. But if you just go up to someone that you don't really know and you, you tell them you ride mountain bikes, they, it's, it's, words don't really communicate uh, the intensity of the stuff that we're riding. But it's all worth the, the risk we take. Uh, I'm already riding my bike. I've already forgot about all the pain. Uh, I think that's that's something that just happens. Like that's just part of being human. Like we can easily forget about pain, and like it's it's in the back of my mind, but it doesn't. It's really not a big factor. Like I'm not I'm not gonna not go for that jump. Like I'm probably gonna do another 360. I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep pushing myself and. I mean, getting hurt is part of it. Um, my leg's stronger now because I got some metal in there, and you know, I got. I'll probably break my other leg now. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I can laugh about it because I'm I'm healed. If I mean, you gotta laugh about it. If you can't laugh about it, then then I mean, you just you gotta laugh about it. There's, there's guys that are my age that they have to move out of the way for me because I'm modeling harder than they are. <laughs> and that's really fun because it's just, I don't know. Guys are always like, oh, this is a guy sport. Girls don't want to get hurt. They don't want to take the risk, but then they end up getting showed up. So it's pretty funny in the end. That's awesome. And I think they started taking me riding with them when I was about 11 or 12 and I thought I was just the coolest girl ever because I'm hanging out with my older brothers I was the only girl in the group so I thought it was special because I haven't seen any other girl do this and my brothers would always make bike videos and I thought they were the coolest thing because they do all these tricks and then people would watch them people would comment like dude that's sick like you got to make more videos. And I remember thinking, oh, well, I want to be that. Like, that's really cool. I want videos made of me. I want people to watch and be like, wow, like, she's totally shredding. And so I'd always nag my brothers. If we, we take family trips to Mammoth, Big Bear, and um, Lake Tahoe, and we'd go to, Nor go to North Star. So I'd make my brother follow me down the trail with the GoPro and I'd be like, you better get this, like I'm going to mob harder because you're filming me. Like that's the only reason I'm mobbing this hard and it pushed me because I'm like, I want to look cool in the video, like I want to look like I'm going fast. And we'd come home, he'd have all the footage and I'd just nag him like, Nick, make my video, like just make it, I want to see it. So when I'm riding with my brother, he's he's gotten to the point where he's he's as fast as I am. Sometimes he's he's faster in different sections than I am. So he'll go faster like around some turns, but then I'll catch back up to him on the rocks and then like vice versa. And we just we get down to the bottom at the same time, but we go through sections at different speeds. And it's it's just really fun to follow because like I'll pick the same lines he does. And then when he's following me, he'll pick the same lines I do, and then we'll just we'll kind of like feed off each other, and like it just it just makes us faster, and it's just so much fun, especially to ride with your brother. I mean that's that's one of the coolest things is is riding with him, and uh, he thinks he's faster than me, but 
I, I, I don't think he is. He definitely doesn't throw tricks. He's pretty stylish, but he won't, he won't take his feet off the pedals or take his hands off. Yeah, so Nick, my brother, he thinks he's faster than me, but he's really not. I mean, like, he can manual, no doubt about it. He can manual through some, like, pretty gnarly sections. It doesn't make sense. But he's not faster at downhill than I am. And I think it's because I focus more on going fast and throwing whips and scrubs, and he focuses more on just getting like a crowd psyched, throwing tricks and like going a little bit slower, but making things look cooler. Um, yeah, he's not faster than me. Yeah, when you're going up to something and it scares you a little bit, you have to always think that like, by the time you're done with whatever you're doing, you could be a different person. Like you could be seriously hurt. You could change your life. You could, you could break your neck. You don't want to talk about it, but you could break your neck. You could be paralyzed, you could break your leg. Um, and you would not be the same person you were before you decide to do that obstacle. But you have to take the, you take the risk and oftentimes the reward is really worth it, right? It's, it's the best feeling ever. That sense of achievement that you just did the best thing that you could and, and it really does outweigh the risk that you take um, that you could seriously hurt yourself. Like, why do I do tricks? I do tricks because it's cool. I mean, it's as simple as that. I, I love showing off. I, I've always loved showing off. I love when people are like walking on the sidewalk, I, I have to pop a wheelie and I wheelie past them. You know, if, if there's a lot of people at the jumps, I throw my pads on and I just start, you know, doing Supermans, no footy cans, and I just, I just, get, I just get crazy. I just get super amped when people, when people are, have that like woe factor. Like when people are in awe and they're just like, oh my gosh, that's so crazy and so gnarly. Like, how can you do that? That's like what, that's what amps me up. That's how, that's what I feed off of. I just love showing off. I mean, like I don't do tricks when I'm by myself because then there's nobody, there's nobody to see it. So it's like, why do, you know, why do the tricks? But when there's people, to, when there's people to see it, that's when, you know, that's, that's when the tricks come out. And landing a trick is I remember when I learned how to do a 360 I mean I it took days and I just did it over and over and over and crashed again and again and again kept jumping off the bike and and finally like it something clicked like I finally figured it out and I started landing them so I was like I would land one out of ten then I was landing five out of ten then I was landing like like Every, like I would only miss two out of the ten I would land and I just I just kept getting more comfortable and and it just got easier and easier to where I was just getting that muscle memory and then you know you gotta you gotta do it on different jumps because not every jumps the same and then you get really comfortable doing it and I'd say that trick I get the most adrenaline from because you're completely spinning around like your your back is to the landing and that is probably like one of the scariest things is having your back to the landing. And as you're coming around, you have to, you have to spot your landing. And if you, if you can't spot it, then you literally stop spinning. That trick, definitely you have to commit. There's no, you can't like, like for doing like a no footed can or a Superman, like you can kind of, you know, you can keep going a little farther back on the bike and, you know, putting your leg over a little bit farther. But with 360, there's no... I'll spin halfway and then the next time I'll spin a little farther. Like you have to spin the whole way. And if you don't make it, you know, you're going to be landing backwards or, you know, you're going to jump off the bike and land on the flat ground, like, you know, break your leg again. And it's just, yeah, it's just a lot of fun.
Yeah. What's your... If you're not crashing, you're not riding hard enough. That's that's my uh, that's my ending quote. Yeah. If you're not crashing, you're not riding hard enough. That's huge hair. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs>